Hi, and welcome to the Hypnotize Me podcast, the podcast about transformation, healing, and hypnosis. I'm Dr. Liz. Today, I interview Natalie Rawlings, who was a young mother in her mid-20s who felt completely unprepared for pregnancy and particularly childbirth. A friend of her husband's, who was a clinical hypnotherapist, sent her a hypnosis tape that she could listen to which she did throughout her pregnancy. And she ended up having a birth that she never imagined. Let's tune in and hear what happened. I'm here today with Natalie Rawlings, and we have been really close friends for um, almost, what, like 13, 14 years how old is your oldest child? Exactly. She's 15. I think I met you when she was like one and a half, something like that. Right. And we met through La Leche League, which is a breastfeeding support, mother-to-mother support. It's free all over the world in case you want to check that out. If you're pregnant, you can go to meetings. If you're have, If you have a baby and you're nursing, you can go to meetings to see if there's one in your area. And Natalie is also... You're La Leche League leader now, right? Yeah. Yes. 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 She is. Okay. I have a meeting tonight, in fact. <laughs> but other than that, when she was pregnant with her first, Emily, who is now 18, 19? How old is she? 19. Wow. Huh? 19. Right. <laughs> yeah. She's a sophomore in college. And you got pregnant. And what? Then what did you think? I got pregnant, and to be perfectly frank with you, um, it was entirely planned, but very soon after getting pregnant, I came to the realization that I was utterly uh, psychologically unprepared to become a mother. There were all kinds of crazy thoughts that went through my mind, not the least of which was I had skipped a year of high school and somehow managed to skip biology, and I had like no idea about what it meant to be a mammal. So if there was someone who was unprepared... <laughs> To be a La Leche League leader and to have a natural childbirth, it was probably me. Mm -hmm. And the silver lining of having been married to a man who was 18 years my senior was that he was an unreconstructed hippie from the 60s. And um, his college roommate was a fellow named David Norton, and he runs the Hartford Hypnosis Center in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And David was kind enough to make a cassette tape. Yes, that's how old I am. Uh (laughs) Uh for for hypnosis for childbirth and I listened to this tape every single day from the moment that I got it and was able to have a completely um, unmedicated uh, uh, unmedicated hypnosis induced or not induced but hypnosis childbirth in a hospital setting in Plantation General, which has one of the state's highest C-section rates. It was, a, a, my, my birth story is kind of interesting in that for, for someone who had a normal birth, mm-hmm. I had a, a doula who uh, was the head of critical care nursing at Jackson Memorial down in Miami. And she was just a good personal friend and she was Jamaican. Mm-hmm. And my, my doula at one point fired my first labor and delivery nurse because my labor and delivery, my first one kept trying to get me to take meds and lie in bed and be a good obedient patient so that I could eventually have a C-section and she could be done for the day. Mm -hmm. And my doula walked out into the hallway with my first LDR nurse and they were both Jamaican. And all I could, I didn't understand a word, but all I could hear was that my doula was really going after her. Uh Wow. Then this Rastafarian nurse came in and said, I'm your new labor and delivery nurse now. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, that's fine by me. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the, the tape was great. It ran about 20 minutes Mm -hmm. and it had a lot of the standard hypnosis tropes you know close your eyes concentrate on your breathing Mm -hmm. um visualize a happy place visualize yourself walking with your child i didn't know what gender i was going to have i had never met david norton and the first time i met him Mm -hmm. so he had 
he had mailed this tape to you? Is that what he did? You were living in Florida, Plantation, Florida, and he was in Connecticut. Connecticut, yes. Okay. He mailed it to me as a gift. Because um, he was a friend of your husband's. It, now your ex-husband, but your husband at the time. I, yes. He's now, he was my ex-husband's college roommate. Okay. Got it. All right. So he mailed it to you. You listened to it. And then when did you actually meet him in person? Three years later. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yep. Just before the internet. So that's why he had to mail me the tape. Nowadays, you would download the thing. Yeah. Yeah, he sure would. It was great, it, and he did a, a, a you know very nice job. It's part of his part of his repertoire of work, you know, mm-hmm. along with the the quit smoking stuff and the goal setting stuff and the working through fears and anxiety. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I first got it, I was a little bit like, oh, I don't know, but I was very committed, despite being woefully unprepared as a as a thinking mammal. I was very committed to an unmedicated and and natural childbirth. Mm-hmm. And my ex-husband was equally committed to a hospital birth, which led to some, you know, how are you going to do that, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, the, and the hypnosis seemed like the ideal solution for uh, f- to reconcile the two situations. And we found an OBGYN who was sympathetic mm-hmm. and, and and willing to go along with the birth plan and willing to go along with the hypnosis birth. He seemed to think that at some point in transition, I would give it all up and, you know, just get the Pitocin and get it over with. And mm-hmm. um, and that did not happen. Um, what was transition like for you? Like, did you stay in a relaxed state? Was it like, oh, shit, here it is? Like, what was it like for you? You know, transition uh, was, it was gradual. It was not some sort of sudden onset thing. Mm-hmm. I remember a moment before transition where they came in and they said, you know, you are X number of centimeters dilated. If you're going to get an epidural, now's your moment. Mm. And I looked at my doula and I was like, could you please just get this woman out of here? And then I proceeded to have, because I hadn't been breathing, because I'd been sort of taken out of my focus Mm -hmm. and the worst contraction that I think I had the whole birth cycle. Right. Mm -hmm. And I looked at, I looked at my, at my, my ex-husband and said to him, this natural childbirth shit is for the birds. (laughs) (laughs) And I, you know, took a few deep breaths and concentrated on my beach scene and being at peace. And I hit the reset button and I did well. And Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you how my transition went. When it came time to have the, when it came, when I was in transition, the nurse went to get the doctor Mm -hmm. and, and the doctor and the nurse had a conversation standing in the doorway and the nurse had her back to me and the doctor was facing me and he's reading my chart and discussing it with the nurse and his first question is what is she on wow the the nurse said she's not doing anything she's just having a natural childbirth with the help of hypnosis Mm -hmm. and he said really And he popped his head in and he just couldn't believe that that was happening because it was so unusual. And he said, well, okay, fine. And then I guess figuring because I wasn't screaming bloody murder, um, he went off and delivered another baby. (laughs) And came back to me because I guess I had dime or something, Mm -hmm. uh, which which was probably all good. But one thing I do remember about my birth, and it's really just ancillary to the whole hypnosis thing is, I would have had what's called a veil baby if they hadn't broken my water. I was 10 centimeters dilated uh-huh. fully, and I was, and I was having contractions at all the appropriate moments, push it, you know, ready to push when someone said, did her water break? And I said, no. And I have a feeling to this day that the LDR nurse and the doula were sort of working on this little mystical thing that I could get a veil baby, i.e. a baby born with the amniotic sac intact. Yes, okay? in the call, which a lot of people believe is a side note, um, means that they're psychic. Like that's a psychic baby, a baby that's born in the call in like, you know, midwifery lore. Right, which is why I think they were trying to put it past the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> so then what I do remember, and I remember thanking God I was calm enough for this, is he gets this thing that for all you know, for all the world, looks like a coat hanger. Like, I'm like, geez, I hope that thing is sterile. Uh-huh. And he gets up in there and breaks my water. And, and very soon after the baby was born. Yeah, mm-hmm. my, my beautiful little daughter. 
Wow. Um, nine ounces born just in time for breakfast after laboring through the night. So, wow. Uh, it was, it was really neat. The funny thing about the hypnosis piece was we had also gone to Lamaze classes mm -hmm. and when it got time to like get busy with the real Lamaze business of this stuff, the, the nurse says you took Lamaze classes. Yes. Yes. We took Lamaze classes. Do you remember what to do now? And Jim and I just looked at each other and we're like, no, absolutely not. Have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it was just like, I think we're supposed to have a baby, right? Like, <laughs> what happens at this point, you know? So, um, and then what happened? And then, so I just started thinking of, you know, I could hear Dave's voice in my head. Of course, when you play the tape twice a day in the, in the three weeks leading up to your birth, you, you can hear Dave's voice in your head uh -huh. and it's just about breathing and concentrating on, on the breathing concentrating on being well and healthy, imagining yourself with this healthy, beautiful baby mm -hmm. and, and just pushing through whatever, whatever pain or discomfort. I don't think he used the word pain. I'm almost. Yeah, sure. we never do. We use discomfort because yeah. Yeah, <laughs> well, pain is so subjective and it's also a term that often will set off pain. Like you hear the word pain, you know, I hear the word pain. I can think of something that's hurting in my body right now. Right. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. It was about discomfort and, you know, pushing through and all, all these things will pass and you'll be able to walk on the beach with this child. And well, actually, it was about imagining a beautiful garden. And then it was sort of then there was a visualization at the end about what was ideal for me. And of course, it was about walking on the beach, mm -hmm. which is very um, it's a very important image to me. Yeah. So, you know, work through the discomfort, breathe through it. Take big breath in, cleansing breath out, big breath in, cleansing breath out. Mm -hmm. Push when the when the nurse tells you to. That wasn't on the tape, but, you know, push as appropriate, I think, was one of the words that he said. I would have mm. played the tape if I still had a means of playing a cassette, but I don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you try to stay in the moment, take your attention back to all the instruction that you had been listening to. For the last month. Yeah. Well, I, I got the tape when I was maybe three months pregnant and I listened to it every single day, really religiously. Like uh -huh. uh, it was about building a place in my head and in my emotional state to be ready to have the baby. Because as soon as you get pregnant, as you know, people just love to tell you their birth stories. Yes. And until you get to a supportive mother's group, a lot of these birth stories are, are, are horrible. You know, I had the worst birth of my life. So if you... If you allow your head to be crowded with those thoughts, it, um, it, in my mind, it becomes self-fulfilling. And so I was very determined to stay psychologically strong so that I could get through it. I figured my body could do it. I'd had nice, good checkups and I was young, but I wanted mm -hmm. to be psychologically strong. Because the one thing I feared was being in labor forever. Oh, yeah. You know? That was the one thing I feared was being in labor forever. And, and lucky for me, I was not. Mm -hmm. But I also think I uh, was able to move the process along just because I was visualizing the end product, a healthy baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You know, and I had all kinds of good support. Um, I had, you know, I had the doula. I had the cool L Rastafarian LDR nurse mm -hmm. who kept coming in and checking on me and telling me that I was doing very well. There was some concern because my baby's heart rate was unnaturally slow mm -hmm. and the LDR nurse just kept looking at me and looking at my face and I could tell that she was being honest. She says, it's just because you're so relaxed. Wow. It's because you're so relaxed that your, your baby is just going through this process. You know, you two are going to get through this together. I do remember her saying that. Wow. What a wonderful thing for her to say to you. I, I think it was a really nice, encouraging thing to say. Yeah. You know? That one with the accidental comment of the doctor. How old were you? I was 25 when I gave birth. Wow. So, yeah, that was young. I mean, mm -hmm. that seems young to me now. But <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I think it's a little young by the American standards, you know, of today, you know. But, but I'm kind of the proof that anybody could do it. I mean, I married a crunchy granola, unrepentant hippie, mm -hmm. and it wasn't, you know, Jungian psychology and hypnosis and all of that stuff. It was not my thing. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, 
you know, I accepted the hypnosis piece of it and I really credit it for my being able to have the kind of birth that I wanted in a setting where the odds really were stacked against you. Yeah. I clearly recall, I, you know, the, the, the doctor in the practice on call was the guy who delivered my baby. But the guy I saw every month and then every week and the weeks, you know, they get, as, as you near your date, you start going every week. Mm hmm was a guy who, who was the guy who said, yeah, you can do your birth plan. Yeah, you can have hypnosis. And he wasn't totally convinced of it, right? But he came in and he was and he picked up little Emily and she was, you know, seven pounds, nine ounces. And he was a big guy. So he's like, got her in sort of a football hold. And he looked at the both of us and, he, and I could just tell that, A, he still truly enjoyed being an obstetrician and delivering babies. Mm -hmm. And B, he was pretty darn odd. At, at the way the whole thing had gone down in at Plantation General of all places. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, the the statistics here, even 19 years later, are still awful. Like, we have the highest cesarean rates in the entire country. I, at Plantation, I could see sort of the whole scheduled C-section. I'll be back at work in four and a half weeks, and so, I, you know, this baby can't interrupt my life when... Any one of us who's had a baby, even those who have Schedule C's, realize that this baby is going to spend the rest of its life interrupting your life. That's <laughs> yes, <what you're>, right. <laughs> that's what children are for. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, it was a remarkable experience. And thank you for letting me, you know, think about it again. It was yeah, it's amazing what comes back when you start to tell the story, right? Because I think over the years, you... You, know, you have this shortened version that you give, and often it's even a, a one-liner if you meet someone and they're pregnant and they, they want to talk about that stuff. I never assume right. any woman wants to talk about birth who's pregnant, but that's because I taught prenatal yoga for so long. And, you know, <laughs> so just like a public service warning, do not touch any pregnant woman ever again, okay, unless, unless she asks you to. Do not ask her how many weeks she is. Do not talk to her about birth. Do not tell her that you had a horrible birth. <laughs> Do not tell her you had a good birth. I mean, seriously, pretend that she is like any other person walking around in the world. <laughs> so anyway, but I'm saying like well, sometimes you get into these conversations and a woman does want to talk about that and it becomes a one-liner. Like, oh, I had my baby with hypnosis right? Or I had this yeah. or I had that or whatever it is. But when you actually go back and start thinking about it, it's like, wow, all these amazing things happened. And this is what I did to prepare myself. And this is what I used, And this is how it felt. And, you know, all the details come right back because it's such a life changing experience. Yeah, I mean, I, I only had only gave birth to one child, but it was a very numinous experience. And I'm and, and I think numinous might be the right word for it as well. Yeah, and you're gonna, you're going to have to like define that for us for the rest of us, Natalie. <laughs> so for normal people, it's kind of a moment that glows in your memory. It's magical. Ah, got it. Okay, great. It's magical. And it really did feel magical. It felt I, I went back and I read my journal, which I, I must have written about six hours after the baby was born. And it's just full. I mean, it's not well written. It's just a million explanation, exclamation points and how great it was and and how uh, none of my deepest fears came true and how breathing and visualizing and helped a lot and the joke and about how we just basically forgotten everything we've been taught in the Lamaz classes you know that point where you're supposed to alter your breathing we didn't do that we just oops we just <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you just it sounds like you just stayed in your zone like you went back to your zone you stayed there and the baby came out that's pretty much it. Like, I wish it was a little bit more complicated than that. But, you know, the key to that was the pre-work, which is the weeks and weeks of listening to that audio tape so that I could stay in that zone. I had something to focus on. Yes. Yeah. I hear that as as helpful, whether women decide to do hypnobirthing or a custom hypnosis or download one off the Internet. It, it's helpful for them to have something to focus on in those many, many months leading up to it. Like just that act itself of listening to something and focusing on something helps bring down the anxiety of the approaching birth. Right. You reduce all the noise and the chatter that's going on around you. What's helpful is it is all about you in that moment. And you can find your center, find your comfort place and say, okay, well, 
you know, I am clearly uncomfortable from the waist down and I have to do something about it. And the hypnosis told me what I was supposed to do. And then the LDR nurse told me that it was time to push. So Mm -hmm. I pushed and it was really, really kind of wonderful. Yes. Yeah. It sounds absolutely wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being here today. I think we've come to the end of our time, but I really appreciate your time and and talking about Emily's birth and how it how it helped transform you. Thank you. I appreciate you asking because I haven't had an opportunity to think about it too, too much. And I don't go to my LHA League meetings now, um, you know, with my baby being 19 years old and talk about my birth story. I'm, I'm more in a place where I can listen to others' birth stories. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Which is a great place. I mean, actually, right, right before we end here, I want to say that that's often – a great place to process your birth story is La Leche League. Whether it's traumatic, whether it wasn't, it's such an accepting atmosphere. Yep, we're only about breastfeeding and helping you do that in whatever way or whatever in whatever way that's going to work best for you and your family. So we do get all kinds. It's a very uh, over the over the 19 years I've been involved with La Leche League, I've been to a lot of meetings in a lot of different groups, and that's the only constant. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I'll put how to find a meeting in the show notes for the listeners who, who want to look for a meeting. So that was a wonderful interview with Natalie. I was so happy to do it. And what really struck me is that she was committed to listening to this hypnosis. She listened to it, she said, twice a day for months. And she was committed to having the birth that she wanted. It doesn't always work out that way. You'll hear that soon when... My birth story goes to air actually on the podcast next week, but it did for her and she felt like hypnosis really helped get her through those really tough times in the birth, as well as reduce anxiety during pregnancy and that I hear over and over again. So that's a wonderful piece. Another way to do that, and I've said this before on the podcast, is through prenatal yoga. Another way to do that, and I've said that Another way to do that, and I've said this on the podcast before, is through prenatal yoga. So find a class in your area and go. It really helps reduce anxiety and depression during pregnancy as well as after. If you have a clinical hypnotherapist in your area that does hypnosis for childbirth, like look them up, right? Get some help with that. Like take a class or do a custom hypnosis, anything that's going to help you feel more relaxed, more comfortable during birth is going to be great for you. Like, believe me, (laughs) okay, it's going to be great for you. So find someone in your area to work with you and prepare that for you. Or download one from the internet. There's a free hypnosis for a better pregnancy on my website if you join the newsletter. And then I also do custom hypnosis for the birth. I find that that's much more effective because people have such different fears they need to release for birth. They have different birth plans. They have different goals for their own birth. So I find the custom one is more effective. I also talked in the interview about being a prenatal yoga teacher. So if you're interested in becoming one yourself and really being a part of women's pregnancy in this way, you can go to two places. There's I love prenatal yoga. Dot com And that's to become a teacher. You can find out when my next training is. And the other place, if you're already a teacher, is marketingfromyourmat.com. And that lays out my whole system to how to build like really successful prenatal yoga classes. So you can check both of those out. And I'm also going to put in the show notes a link to La Leche League so that you can get breastfeeding support if you're listening to this and you need that kind of support as well. All right, have a wonderful week, people. Peace.